So now it's time for update. Dreadful pun. Apologies. Well, I for say that. this with apprehension. What's app doc? Thank you. That was all I was waiting for. I think the delays are appalling sometimes, but it really <laughs> appeals to me. If you have any app jokes or puns we would love to hear from them but in the meantime this is a new feature at the moment we have an app date at around 3 15 on every show that's monday wednesday and friday 3 to 4 p.m but we're going to be continuing our app date weekly indefinitely because apps are so integral to so many different types of art um, before we get Julie to start talking a bit more about how she's been using a photography app that J Josh recommended on a previous show, we've just been discussing among ourselves while we were waiting to go on air the new laws that were announced again late last night and I believe come into force on Monday, is that right, around gatherings of six people? So we're not quite sure what that means for the arts but what we do think is that if you're Yes, if you're organised and regulated, you're a proper business, then it shouldn't impact. But if, for example, you're not, you know, say you were running an art group and socially distancing, but it's not part of an established education body, it's not being run by a council, I think the chances are you would have to limit it to six people from now on. I mean, that was just one example we were thinking about if people were painting in the park in a socially distanced group. That should be fine, but because it's not being regulated, it's not part of Ofsted, if it's not part of CQC, we think sadly those things are going to go by the wayside. We're trying to get some clarity on it, and um, and I think that seems to be a little bit difficult. But one of the other things that I think was made clear today, I think it was one of the cabinet ministers doing a media interview, is that giving your contact details when you go into what they call a hospitality venue is now going to become compulsory it has become advisable but not part of british law so lots of pubs and restaurants have been doing it and cinemas and things but some haven't that links in very nicely to the nhs covid19 app because as we've discussed and you know, we will continue to show our WhatsApp auntie films, but do look at those on the website as well for more information about how the app works. What you should be able to do is scan a poster when you go into a venue. And that should, if the app is given status as a medical device, which is a kind of technical legal thing, that should enable people not to have to hand over personal information. But one of the other is going to be completely compulsory from now on. You know, if you want to go to the pub, the restaurant, I mean, between so many people don't drink, I don't know why they keep talking about pubs, but should you wish to go even to a cafe, you will have to either give your details or scan a code. So I think that's another really good reason to use the app. What do you think, Julie? I think definitely it's a very useful app if, if, if you're in an area where it's where it's working because it, it just cuts down a lot of the interpersonal interaction. You know, you just hold your smartphone up and scan a, um, a little, what's it? What do you call those little things? QR code. Thank you. So you scan as, as if I didn't know. I do know, but I just forgot. I only knew recently. Uh, but you scan the QR code and um, the phone does the rest of the work. Yeah, and I think if you've got impaired speech, if you just don't really want to be speaking through a mask, you certainly don't want to be touching somebody else's pen, it's definitely going to be the most hygienic way mm. of coming into a venue. Like I say, the app has to get approval as a legally recognised medical device first. So even when the app first is released, if it hasn't reached that status yet, you would still have to fill details in. But yes, I think it's going to make a huge difference. And it's necessary, of course, because of the way people have been behaving. And, you know, probably it's the venues that haven't been keeping contact details, which are the venues that test and trace teams are discovering were the causes of the problems. Because I think we were discussing as well before it started, the outbreaks seem to be coming from people's homes and large gatherings outside. And that's why it's a ban on gatherings rather than sort of because people say, oh, well, we could go to the pub and there's loads of us. And you say, well, 
Yes, but if it's a properly regulated hospitality venue, the infection control is such as it's not necessary. And you were saying as an elite swimming coach, Robin, that these gathering things are not going to impact on anybody who's regulated in the way that you're regulated by Swim England. That's right, isn't it? Um, well, as far as I know, and, and stuff that we read this morning from Swim England is that at the moment it doesn't impact because we are already running extremely tight protocols um you know temperatures on arrival um ev ev you know because they're closed sessions as such everybody is already you know registered signed a whole raft of consent forms around behavior and um as of monday we had we we issued further guidance that if any swimmer um is a, is isolated from their normal day activity i.e school for most of them um, and your college then they also can't swim. So it's kind of, you know, you can't be isolated from one place and not somewhere else. Um, and and I think we're going to have to just just wait and see and, and keep doing our best to to make sure that, you know, we are we are being safe. I think one of the questions I've got um, is that will with this kind of um, ramping up of, of the 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 uh, compulsory nature of of either using the app or writing down, you know, or, or providing your details, um, which, which I, nobody should have a problem with. Um, but is, is will venues or places of work or whatever be obliged to provide assistance to someone who writing their personal details down isn't the easiest thing to do? Yeah, absolutely. The Equality Act 2010 requires all service providers to make what's described as reasonable adjustments. And very clearly, it is reasonable. One of the advantages Together 2012 has of taking part in this app pilot is we're able to feed directly back to the NHS who have an extraordinarily able leader in terms of equalities Amina Vora and Amina has been very very helpful in feeding back to us as well so I know Amina is taking these things on board and indeed you and Josh have already made some very helpful suggestions I think it would be naive to think it's going to run everything smoothly at the beginning because we're all implementing a brand new system. But I think what you were saying about Swim England really brought up something I wanted to stress. If we follow the guidance, we can do things safely. Yeah. And that's the difference. You know, properly regulated things are taking place without a problem. And if a, somebody's becoming infected who might well have become infected somewhere else, the system is working. You know, if we all cooperate and make it work, the problem is when it isn't. And um, the government are launching a campaign today, which I find really hard as somebody with a phasia and short term memory problems to say, but it's face, no, hands, face, space, wash your hands, cover your face, create enough space from other people. And if you just do those three simple things, it, it is going to make a huge difference. But moving on to arts apps, because apart from anything else, people don't want to learn how to download an app just to be able to install the COVID-19 app. <laughs> What's the name of the app that you've been playing with that Josh recommended on a previous show? Photoshop Camera. Photoshop Camera. So I'm going to put these onto solo because I didn't realise till I looked at a recording recently that all of the pictures we were seeing on screen the right way up were going out sideways when they went onto YouTube, which is... Oh, right. Okay. Brilliant. So I'm not going to risk sharing the screen. So this is a photo of a cat who's not a million miles away at the moment. And she's absolutely desperate to get on screen. So this is Jinx, and I'm just going to solo it so it stays the right way up. So when did you take this photo, Julie? Um, yesterday. Yesterday. So we'll take this solo off and it looks hide. looks like you've stolen our cat. <laughs> they're very and, similar aren't they yeah and this is what the photo looks like with photoshop camera so what did you use on this julie it's a lens called artful artful a-r-t-f-u-l and we're just going to have a look at another example also cattish because it's just so convenient because we, they seem to be everywhere 
So this is an, a photograph, and I should have di audio described the first one. So the first cat was a tabby cat curled up, almost asleep. This is a blue and cream tabby with a little bit of a purpley pink collar showing. She's curled up on one of those crochet blankets, which has got a gray background with bright pink and turquoise. And now if I take that one off, this is what Julie has done with the app. So now the whole of the cat is bright turquoise. The background is orange with sort of, are they red spirals going through it as well, Julie? Yeah. Almost like candy striping. Orange and red spirals, yeah. And as with the tabby, what it's done to the fur is, how would you describe it? Almost plasticated it. I think it's tufty. But she is your cat, so you've, <laughs> you've got a right to describe her as ever you, however you want. Well, I know I was actually trying to describe the um, the photograph with the filter, not the actual cat itself. Yeah, it's, you know, it's almost like you know that colour and um, that like a, a green that that brass or copper go when when they're weathered. So when they get oxidised, it's that almost greeny mm -hmm. dust colour, which doesn't help you if you can't see. Um, uh, but it's a sort of green with almost a gray in it yes the, i mean beyond that because with the first picture what seemed to happen is the cat was you know the sort of format of the picture was changed but in the second one you'd also got this kind of spiral going through it were they two different filters yes this one was pop art the last and, one um, and are you able to choose the color scheme within the filter well, it seems that you can, but I'm Josh. You're the the expert on this, so I'm going to look to you for guidance. I started to play around with different values, but I had to work a little bit hard to find them. Um, it's in the edit because uh, I didn't take these photographs with with um, with those lenses. I imported two photographs and then played with them uh, within the the app itself. But there seems to be values attached to the the various colors and saturation and the hues and things like that. Um, so, I mean, how have you found it, Josh? Um, in, so for, for the pop art one, for example, um, I haven't tried to change kind of the colors that, that it gives you through each lens. There's kind of, there is lots of, so the lens is pop art and then within that there's kind of five options i guess or kind of different yeah, yeah. filters that's... that do different things and um, i know you can manipulate them, them because there's ones that have kind of objects and things and you can kind of change the scale of the pretend objects and um, i haven't mm -hmm. tried changing the colors of them I think it's not surprising because Photoshop proper is the industry standard. And I think the great advantage of all of these filters, whether you use them on something like Instagram or through, through an app, is you don't have to know how to manipulate. No. You know, I mean, I've done all sorts of masterclasses and courses in how to use Photoshop and how to create those kind of effects. But here you can just press a button. And OK, it's a bit more of a limited palette. But I think particularly if you've got restricted mobility or you don't know how to use apps, it's a wonderful way of being really creative. What I'm hoping I might get from one of you two for a app date in the next week is some kind of screen recording where you show us exactly how you do it. 